Hey, I'm just rolling out the farm. Um, and I thought I would do a little video about bubbles. Um, I know I'm like nonstop about this horse, but that's because I love him. Um, he is one of the coolest little horses I've ever met. And I think a lot of people who've seen him online, who've seen me post about him, um, can really kind of, I don't know, have a, an emotional reaction to him because he is so cute and so darling and so talented and one of the coolest horses I've ever had a chance to work with. And I've worked with some really nice horses. Um, I've groomed at the FEI levels. I've worked for years for an Olympic rider. Um, and I've sold a couple hundred horses. Like I've seen a lot of nice horses, but Bubbles, this little 15, three and a half hand saddlebred is one that really takes the cake. He is just so nice and his, his personality, his work ethic is amazing. And luckily for him, he's built well enough and moves well enough that he's really something special. But I want to talk about the other side of horses like Bubble. Um, there's a saying that well-behaved horses rarely go Grand Prix, just like they say well-behaved women rarely make history. Well, it's like, it's true. Um, the sad, the sad fact about Bubbles, which everybody knows, is that he came to me through a 501c3 organization, the Saddlebred Legacy Foundation. Those girls are amazing. They help so many horses find the right career for them, but all of those horses end up there because they're not right for something. And in the case of Bubbles, there, there was a lot that he wasn't good at. Um, he came to me with the description of 15 three hands, four years old, rank, but jumped a thoroughbred in the field. So we think he's going to be a sport horse prospect. And like, I, I love a challenge. Like I love horses like that because the best horses I've ever had have been really hard to get along with at first. They've been biters, buckers, rearers, bolters, or just like, I call them like double handers. Like they're, they're going and you've got to ride with a double hand to hold them. Um, so when I heard that description of him, I thought it was great. I mean, the last horse that I got from them was so fearful of people. Um, it took me about 30 minutes in a stall to touch her the first time. Um, and it was a question of whether she would be safe enough to continue on this earth or not, which she was, but it, it was a long road she ended up being a super cool horse. Um, Bubbles, the first, so I, I said, yeah, I want him. Like I saw a video of him. I saw he was an awesome mover and just a little bit cheeky and like a, a baby. Um, so I went to pick him up. He didn't want to get on the trailer. I could barely even get him from his stall out of the barn. Like stopping at every doorway, didn't want to go forward. Like he could barely lead. And I know he'd been in a really good program for saddle seat riding before he came to me, but he just had no interest. Like, I don't think he's the type of horse that can be in a big time program like that. I think he needs to be in a very small program that has a lot of time. Fortunately, I have plenty of time. So the first day he was at the farm, he bit three people, including me. I knew he was mouthy. That was the other thing. He's rank, mouthy, and jumped a thoroughbred in the field. So, uh, he bit me. He bit the assistant trainer for the woman who owns the barn. And he bit the woman who owns the barn. That is not how you make a good impression. Like, that is not how you say, I'm going to be here for a while. It's going to be great. So for a while, everybody at the barn had to be watching because uh, he would come up behind you and get you like from behind. He was naughty. Um, 
never mind doing anything with him. Um, lunging him, he lo- he loved to spin around on the lunge, and he'll still change direction on the lunge every once in a while, but we're far beyond that. Um, and I could see, I was like, yeah, if you wanted to just, like, get something done, no. <laughs> like, absolutely not. Um, but you can tell that he's a great horse. You can tell he's a great horse just looking at him. And this is no, this is nothing to saddlebreds, but no one at the barn would have guessed he was a saddlebred because he's built differently. He moves differently than what you think of as a saddlebred. I know that saddlebreds come in like all shapes, sizes, colors, and abilities. Like they're amazing saddlebred sport horses, but to your average person who we're still educating about saddlebreds, no one thought he was a saddlebred. He was just a, like a horse with like a sport horse presence. So it took me weeks to get on him because we had to do everything else first. He had to relearn everything. He had had eight months before I got him off, like not being worked. So I'm sure a lot of what we were dealing with was, sorry, I'm like rebalancing my phone. Um, was eight months of that. Like I, I do what I want, which is what Bubbles would always like to do. Um, fortunately for us, Bubbles also likes to work, but he had to figure out he liked to work. Um, I mean, months of groundwork. I still do groundwork with him to like make sure that we remember what we're doing and we're not gonna do this. (laughs) Um, and I started everything really slowly under saddle. I started him, I restarted him completely. I took him all the way back to, this is what saddle pad is. I took him back to getting on him in a stall like I do with the babies and then round penning. And then we went out to the arena and then we did a local show and then we did our first rated show. But let me tell you, by the time we got to that first rated show, Bubbles was a superstar. He qualified for the East Coast Series Final Championship. I think that's the full name for the USDF Breeders. Oh, it's the USDF. I've got it. It's the East Coast Finals for the USDF Breeders Series Championship. I think. Those are all the words. That might be like scramble, like a word scramble, but those are all the words. Um, in his first test and I have pictures from that first test. He was just perfect. And we've done a few more shows since then. And he's going to be the first horse in my adult life that I've done a championship with because I mean, I've qualified for others, but he's the first one where I think it's important that he go. You know, a lot of championships, if you show horses, like, you qualify, but you know, like, why am I going to go to, like, get 12th? Like, it's a lot of money. Um, But he's really special. Like, do I expect to go to Devon and win? Like, not really. Like, um, I think it would be, I just think he's the quality of horse. Like, I don't know how we're going to do, but he's the quality of horse that deserves to be there. And he's the type of horse that needs to be there. I think repurposed horses need to go. I think lesser known breeds need to go. Um, and I think difficult horses, imperfect horses need to go. More people need to see horses like that going. So more people will understand that it's worth it to deal with imperfect horses and he's for sale. So I'm hoping that somebody will see him and see the horse that he is now and say, I want to continue that. Um, I wouldn't say the hard work is over, but that sort of hard work is over. Um, and it's time for somebody else to take the torch and I'm so excited for them. He's going to go to someone who really deserves him. Um, And I'm going to make sure he goes to someone who really deserves him. And they're going to have a partner for life in a perfectly imperfect horse 
And like, I can't wait to continue to see this horse set the world on fire and be somebody's horse of a lifetime because that's what he is. Okay. I've like waxed on about this. Um, I actually have to go get my imperfect person medicine for my arthritis. Um, so yeah, I hope you like this little tribute, um, the ups and downs and it's not, it's not all glamorous. Um, there's a lot of hard work. There's a lot of heartbreak, but the horses make it worth it. And when you pick the right horse, have the right partner and there's nothing better than that.